Hi, this is Katherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society, and we're here today to interview Wendy Rawson from the director of the Fitchburg yes. um, uh, Public Library. And so, mm -hmm. Wendy, we're so glad to have you with us. We're doing um, uh, a series on the library, kind of getting the history of the library and how it got off the ground yeah. uh, here in Fitchburg, and it's a really interesting story, it I is. think. It is, and thank you for having me. I'm always happy to talk about the library. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Uh, well, it's such a wonderful centering place for the community. Yeah. Well, let's start by finding out about you. Can you tell sure. us a little bit about your background sure. and maybe what uh, what drew you to yeah. say yes to being the uh, director of the Fitchburg Library? Absolutely. So I was um, became a librarian uh, many years ago now, um, and I was working in Ohio and perfectly happy there. I was a branch manager, and I had opened a new branch library, so that was a really fun project. Much smaller scale than what Fitchburg was, um, but when I saw the job posting, I thought, like a community that's opening a library for the first time, like that's that's amazing. Like I, I have to look into that. So I came out for the interview. Um, loved Fitchburg, loved Madison. Um, I grew up in Iowa, so, oh. so kind of um, close to home, but had been in Ohio for a very long time. So um, just really loved it and thought it was just a great opportunity and was was just so happy to be offered the position and to come up. So I came October of 2010. So I had about six months before. Yeah, about nine months before we, we opened the library. So I had an office at City Hall. That, there was just a big hole in the ground where the library was being built. So I got to go on, on the construction site a lot, which I loved. Um, but yeah, it was, it was not something I was really looking for, but I was so glad that I found it, or it found me. Yeah. Great, yeah. great. Yeah. So you really saw the library literally from the ground yes, up, didn't yes, you? As it yes. was being built from, yep. from your, almost from your office yeah. here, here in City Hall. Yeah. Um, well, can you recall for us um, mm -hmm. what it was like to open a library building yeah, yeah. Uh, for the first time in the Fitchburg community? They yeah. never had a library yeah. before. So they had a bookmobile yeah. that came like five times a week, which I think everybody loved, and that's great, but that's five hours a week. And we were going to be providing, you know, 60 hours a week at least. Um, so it was um, a huge project, but such good community support. So the Friends had been operational for, I want to say, five or six years at that point. Um, started out pretty small, but they had a storefront across the street, and so they were selling books all the time, and they were doing programming. They were they really raised sort of the consciousness of Fitchburg about what a library could do for us. Um, so they had laid really good groundwork. So I came in. I was the only person. We had had an interim director who was fantastic. So she had designed the building, worked with South Central Library System to kind of figure out how things were going to work, what size we needed to be. There are county standards um, for size of building, size of collection, size of staff. So we had some, some guidelines to go on, and that had all kind of been laid out before I got here. Um, so I came in to pick up where, where Deb Johnson left off. She was amazing, um, and she, she helped me along for a good long time there. Um, and so we were really, I was really working on staffing, um, how, do, how many people do we need to run the building, how are we going to move into the building, all kind of the logistics, which is really what I love. Mm, great. Um, so, and everybody was just really supportive and, and I think supportive of the the whole project and, and of me coming in, yeah. Great, so you felt yeah. welcomed into the community right away. I did, I had not really considered how hard it would be to not know sort of how the system worked. So the library system, the county system, the state system, it was all new to me. Uh, but I got to meet tons of new people and everybody was very helpful, so. Great, yeah, it's good. great. Well, it's so nice to know that you you had all those resources yeah. available to you, even yeah. though it was new to yes. you and yes. probably a learning curve. Yes. But and the municipality, like that aspect of it, I had never done before. And Ohio libraries are run very differently. So being a part of the municipality was new. So I've gotten to know, I mean, I know all sorts of stuff about public works that I never knew. Like there's just a lot of involvement that I really enjoy. Great, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, so as the new library opened, um, mm -hmm. what were some of the major decisions that uh, were needed to be made from your role as library sure. director? Sure, sure. Um, so a big part of it was was the opening day collection. Um, that had been started before I got here, but you know we didn't have staff to be selecting items, so we had a lot of volunteers that were from the library community, from the Fitchburg community, that, that volunteered to go through lists of books and choose what was going to be in our collection. Um, and then they showed up on semis, three semis, three weeks in a row, and had to be taken off on fork, with a forklift and, and then into the building, on the right floor, in the right place, on the right shelf. How exciting to see all these, so all these materials on. arrive. Well, yeah, so that was fantastic. Um, hiring the staff, so, so as I said, I was at City Hall, I had an office here, and hired probably 
five or six staff members in the spring of 2011 and we were just sort of putting them wherever we could fit them in City Hall. So like there's an empty desk over there. Is anybody going to need that? If it was a seasonal <laughs> desk that they wouldn't need until summer, like maybe we could put somebody there. So, so going through and hiring all the different positions. So you hire the managers and then they help hire their staff and kind of down the, down the way. But getting everybody trained at the same time was a big challenge. And, you know, none of us knew each other. I distinctly remember the first day we opened, we all wore like bright green t-shirts with staff on it. <laughs> because you could go up to another desk and be like, I guess you work here. Great. Can you help me with this question? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And you kind of go from zero to 60 because you open the doors and all of a sudden you have to function like a library and we had no... We had never done it before. No experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no yeah. prior experience. Yeah. So it was not like moving from one library to the next. It was all new. So mm -hmm. it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a good time. Must have been a high level excitement and yes. anticipation yes. within your staff and the community, I'm yes. sure. Absolutely. As you open the doors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was great. Wonderful. Well, so how was the library design? Maybe talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. the, the, um, uh, thought that went into how do you mm -hmm. design a library mm -hmm. for when you open in 2011 what does a library look like it's not just books there's right. so much more to right. libraries yes. these days so yes. can you tell us a little bit so, about that so obviously the books are kind of the bread and butter of what libraries do we have books we have dvds we have audio books we have um books with cds now now we have books that you to push a button and they talk to you um all kinds of things so so you know you you work your floor plan around that, but then you want you want pe just places for people, right? Like it's a it's the third space that you don't have to pay to be in. So you've got seating around and you've got meeting rooms and study rooms and so you're trying to fit kind of like what an, what anybody could need from a library, try to fit it in. And, th and that's hard and I know they had to kind of scooch things down, right? Like you start with everything that you could possibly want and kind of narrow it down to what you can fit in your building. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we did a really good job, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think yeah. the community would uh, would certainly second yeah. what you yeah. have said about yeah. about this, the um, library. I do think that, and I do think that the design of the building really has has been proven successful. You can be in that. I remember the first week, kind of walking around, just to see like who's here, what's going on, how's it going, and thinking like it's not busy enough, it's not busy enough. But then I would start counting people, and there's so many little nooks and crannies that you can. There's a table, a study <laughs> table over here, and two lounge chairs over here and when you start counting up people you know the numbers are really good it just never feels crowded mm -hmm. which I really like which is which is great because yeah. you can yeah. find quiet space yeah. you or never feel like it's not a place that you can be uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. yeah that's great and certainly the location mm -hmm. uh, pretty centrally located yeah. for Fitchburg yes uh, in, yes along Fish Hatchery Road here and Lacey mm -hmm. Road the intersection yeah. here yeah and also City Hall yes uh, so a, cent a central location. Central location, I do still to this day wish we had better public transit. I think uh, there's a lot of people in mm -hmm. Fitchburg. Fitchburg is a very large community. Yes. Um, and I think that there's there's quite a few people that can't get here. So it's something that we're still still working on with the mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and that's still being worked on. Yeah. That that hopefully in the yeah. future that yes. better transportation yes. to get here to yeah. for all residents who are here. Yeah. Well, a question that uh, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. certainly we all think these days about technology and yes. how technology yeah. drives how we do uh -huh. everything. Yeah. Um, so have you seen changes in technology since even 2011, Absolutely. which is yeah. now 12 years ago since yes. you opened up? Uh, can you talk about that a sure. little bit? So I think there's two ways to look at that. I think that we can look at the collections. So so our collections are still circulating pretty well, um, but you know, audiobooks are starting to go down because cars don't have CD players anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to put more funds into overdrive so you can do a digital version and still still get a free audiobook from the library. Um, and like I said, we now have, they're called Vox Books. So it used to be you get a book with a CD and play it, but now it's just built into the book and you just push it and it, it reads the book as you're going. So we've seen some changes like that. We've also, in the building, so we have a technology center that started out with 16 computers. Um, I think now most people have their own devices. So we're really seeing like maybe two or three people in there at a time. Um, so, but a lot of Wi-Fi use. So people are coming in with their own, light, their laptops, their tablets, their devices. Um, so that's been kind of a shift, and we are going to react to that. So we ha we are down to eight computers in the tech center. We did that during COVID. Went back up to 16, saw that they weren't being used, and people really preferred having more space. So we took it back down again, and now we're looking at maybe opening up that space and making it more of a living room space instead of like a classroom style. Mm -hmm. um, so more kind of comfy places that you can have your own device and do some work and not feel so much like you're in a classroom, you know, lined up with other people. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, um, we during COVID installed an external Wi-Fi 
um, access points so that people could be in our parking lot and use Wi-Fi. Oh. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and we've got now on the south patio, we've got the Wi-Fi reaches out there pretty well, and we've got a charge, solar charging station that you can plug your devices into to charge. So, yeah, so we've been making small changes and, and some bigger ones coming. Uh -huh. yeah. So it really is keeping up with that technology, yeah. isn't it? Yes. And uh, do you have... Um, uh, Again, people that you talk mm -hmm. to within mm -hmm. the library system that kind of yeah. help guide you with those things. Yeah, also. it's always interesting to watch what other libraries are doing, both in our system and nationwide, because mm -hmm. um, there's there are um, certainly people that are kind of the, the cutting edge of, of what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always good to keep in touch with people. We go to conferences to see what other people are presenting on what's been successful for them. So yeah, so we're always kind of weighing our options. You know, our space, our budget, our needs of our patrons, how do we all make that kind of fit together? Yeah, yeah. it's a, a, lot, a lot of pieces to yes. put together yes. and make it the best yeah. that it can be. Yep. Well, let's talk about maybe the nuts and bolts of, yes. of running the library. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking of a lot of different things that have to do with that, like yeah. how the materials are chosen for the library. I think that's always a question uh -huh. people have, so how do you do that? Yeah. And then um, maybe what are the various jobs, mm -hmm. both for staff and then sure. volunteers because yeah. the community, for members yeah. of the community who would who would really enjoy yeah. coming in and volunteering at the mm -hmm. library. Mm -hmm. um, and then if uh, if you could also tell a little bit about the uh, library board mm -hmm. and the Friends of the Fitchburg Library sure. and kind of how they yeah. fit into the big picture too. Yeah. Sure. So let's start with staff. So we have several different position levels. So we've got managers of each department. So we've got a youth services department, adult and technical services, and access services, which is circulation. Um, and it's going to be the adult and uh, youth departments that are selecting materials. So we've got librarians and staff um, in those departments that, so there's a couple different ways you can find kind of what's coming in the publishing world. There are a number of professional journals, so they're still in print magazines. <laughs> in print. We get Publishers <laughs> Weekly, Library Journal, um, Kirkus Reviews, um, School Library Journal, and they, they do reviews of what's coming out in the next three or six months. And then also on our vendor websites, they give us lists of what's coming. So we know James Patterson has something coming out, like we know six months in advance and how many copies we're going to want of that. So we, we order pretty far out. Um, and then, and then it kind of just magically shows up <laughs> the, through the back door, um, hopefully in, in bunches that we can manage. It comes mostly um, shelf ready, so we have to do some work to it, put it in the catalog. It does go in the catalog when we order it, um, so that you can put a hold on it. So, so as soon as we know we're getting it, you know we're getting it, and you can say, oh. I want to be on the list for that. Even before it arrives. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some books have what we call a street date, and you, we're not allowed to put it out <laughs> for a certain date, and some we can just put out when we get them. Um, so, so that goes through some processing. We have to put an RFID tag in it because we have a sorter and that does a lot of work for us. So, so that's how that reads is uh, uh, just a tag in it. Um, so that's how that happens. Um, we, most of our positions are going to be, even the, the like librarians or the, um, they're, they're selecting books as part of their job, but they're also on the reference desk. So, so almost everybody in the job works at the public service desks. Um, gives us a lot of flexibility with scheduling. So we've got people that can be Kind of, kind of do everything. Um, we also cross train between the desks. So if your job is in youth services and you're doing programming for kids, um, but but we have a day where everybody's out sick and whatever's happened, we have a snowstorm, something happens, you can go work on the circ desk if we need you to. We can go to um, the reference desk. So that's that's really nice. Um, uh, some of the library assistants mostly work on the desk, especially at the circulation department. Um, that is. Um, just a constant influx of things coming in and out. So, so again, kind of the bread and butter of what we do is checking in and out, and that just never ends. Um, so we've got to have quite a few staff that are um, checking people out. We have five self-check machines in the building, and we do about 80% of our checkout on self-check. People really like that. They can just grab their stuff and go. Um, but we always want to have somebody at the desk. If you have a question, if you have, used to be fines, we're fine free now, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but if you have a lost item or a damaged item or something you need, your card has expired, something like that, mm -hmm. we'll always have somebody there to help you. Mm -hmm. um, we also have quite a few shelver positions. So the big part of you, you put your items in the, in the book drop, and then they have to get 
back to where they live. So some of that is with us. That'll just, we'll, we'll get that on a cart, a shovel, we'll put it on our shelf. Some of it has to go out the back door through delivery because we share materials with everybody in the LinkCat system. So we've got stuff coming and going all the time. Um, we get deliveries every single day. Um, except Sunday, so so we're always getting like holds. If you place a hold and it takes a little while to get here, it's coming from another library. So they're pulling it off of their shelf. Um, we're getting it in the back door. We're scanning it, and putting it on our shelf for you. So it's just, I mean, it's just a lot of moving parts. And one of the volunteer positions that we need help with always is um, getting stuff back to the to the shelves. So so shelving is one of the volunteer activities it's probably the one that we need the most is people to help us get stuff out as fast as we can because you can't have it nobody else can check it out <laughs> until it makes it there sure. so yeah so yeah we are just this week installing a new sorter in the back room so that is going to help us um, the old one had lived a good 12 years um, and was ready to go. The length so, of the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Existence. Exactly. Uh -huh. Went in right when we opened. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's what we most often need volunteers to do. We also have teens that volunteer, um, and they might help set up, like, programs for kids. They might be prepping some craft supplies for kids programs, that kind of thing. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, library board. So the library board is seven members, um, and they are in charge of the finances of the library. They're in charge of supervising me um, and, and advocating for the library. So they are every month going through essentially our checkbook register. What are we spending? Um, are we in budget? Are we making responsible decisions? That kind of thing. Um, and yeah. So, so I think that's a really good way to volunteer also. Mm -hmm. um, people don't often think of that as mm -hmm. a volunteer, but it really is um, something that we need. Uh, that we, our terms are three years, um, so yeah. So and the city council, that. I'm assuming, is, mm -hmm. is, the, is the entity then that appoints those positions yes, on the Yes, the mayor appoints them, okay. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Friends of the Library is another great way to volunteer. Uh, the Friends are fantastic. They've been around longer than we have, <laughs> right? They were kind of the bedrock of the library. Um, so they do sales typically three times a year, um, and, and that's all with donated books. Um, and they do a fantastic job. So they sort them into categories. You can come in and go to, if I like mysteries, they're over here. If I want kids stuff, it's over here. Do an amazing job of going through everything. Um, and we get quite a few donations. So that's, that's a number of groups that come in weekly to, to sort. So that's a big part of it. And then just the big sale. So getting everything out of the, the storage area up to the, and organized um, in the meeting room. Mm -hmm. um, and then they need cashiers, um, and then and then to tear down at the end. So that's a, a really good volunteer opportunity, I think. Great. It's um, nice to know yeah. about those volunteer opportunities, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. Members of the community are, as you said at yeah. the beginning, so supportive yeah. and, yep. and want to uh, be here for the yeah. library in, yeah. in ways that and, they can. And the Friends also has a board, so that's another way that, that you could volunteer is, is being on their board. Um, they are fantastic supporters of us, both just talking us up and, and supporting us as we see them, but also financially. So they have um, funded different projects. So the story walk is in McKee Farms Park. So you walk around the, the park and you read a story. They funded that and we're hoping to improve it this next year with a little more weather resistant version. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one had a good life, but it's also ready to go. Um, they have replaced um, the computers that are in the children's area. So we've got set, like four, com four computers. Two of them are, um, kind of touchscreen educational games, and two of them are iPads that have um, just apps on them. So they have purchased all of that. Um, the train table that we've got that's so fun, the Lego table, they purchased that. So, uh -huh. so they're very good about asking us what it is that we would like to, to change or add service-wise and then putting money towards that. So Great. very appreciative of that. So it sounds like you have that that support mm -hmm. from them as mm -hmm. well as the administrative support from the mm -hmm. board, library yes. board also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. programming because yeah. the Fitchburg is a very diverse community, and and how you um, how you plan for programs that yeah. can uh, reach all those yeah. all those groups yeah. in, in in the Fitchburg yes. community. So programming, I think, is one of the most fun things that we do, um, and a lot of it is is aimed towards kids. Story time is going to be right, like like the kind of the basis, the bedrock of the library, I guess. Um, I feel like we have a lot of people that come to story time as a child. Um, and then maybe we don't see them for a little while when they're young adults and then they have their own kids and they come back to story time. It's kind of a bookends. Um, so, so staff, we've got, we've got youth services staff that are planning those. Um, 
And then they plan other programs based on age group. So it might be, we've got a lap sit story time that I think is really popular. So you don't, you don't have to be mobile to be at the library. You can, for right from the start. Um, and then we do school age programs. So it's gonna be more crafty things or STEM programs, a lot of science kind of stuff. Um, right up through, we got tween programs and then right up through teen. Um, and so, so the staff are really planning programs that they think are gonna be successful with, with what's popular right now. So STEM is a, is a big topic and we wanna make sure that we're supporting that. Um, schools are focusing on that, so we wanna be part of that. Um, but then also it's just gonna be fun. For teens, like it's gotta be fun or they're not coming, right? So like, <laughs> Absolutely. we're making stuff out of duct tape, we're doing, right, like, like kind of anything goes. Um, we're, we're recently reached out into Discord, which is apparently an online channel where you game. I don't know a lot about it, <laughs> but we're doing it because that's what the teens want to do. Um, and then with adults, we're, it's, it's heavily book club based because that's what people respond to. That's what we get the best attendance for. Um, so occasionally we'll do other things. Um, we, with the Historical Society, have several times done an antiques appraisal that I think has been really popular. Um, so some of those things kind of cycle around because people like them so much we have to bring them back. Um, but sometimes we're trying something new. I think we've tried, a, uh, we have a fantasy book club going right now that has um, been pretty successful. So, so yeah, we're always looking to see what kind of what's out there. Summer reading program is a whole different animal. Mm. So then we bring in presenters. We've got drummers. We've got... Um, sometimes a petting zoo, that's always a big one. We had sharks this last year, it's fantastic. <laughs> Snakes sometimes. The animals are always really very popular. But magicians and all sorts of stuff. So mm -hmm. so yeah, a lot of time and thought goes into those programs. Yeah. And we also have forms at the library that you can fill out if there's something that you want us to do. We'd love to hear about it. Oh, nice to know yeah. that also you're seeking feedback yeah. And, yeah. and ideas from the community. Yes, absolutely. Great, yeah. great. Yeah. What a diversity of, of uh, yes. programming oh. that you offer. And then we should talk about outreach because that's also a lot of programming. Uh -huh. So we have, we are so fortunate that we have a, an outreach program. So Minda Mauer is our outreach librarian. She's fantastic. Um, and she, over the summers, will do pop-up libraries at different parks. So, so she chooses three parks. We did Southdale. James, Jamestown Hewell and um, Leopold Park this last summer. So once a week she'll go to each of those. Um, she's got a couple of assistants that go with her and, and they have all kinds of, they make slime a lot, they have bubbles, like they're outdoors, so they've got kind of anything goes. Um, and so they, they do that and they um, oftentimes will be giving out free books. So, so outreach is a situation where we don't really expect you to be able to check something out. Mm -hmm. um, we may have kids without parents, we, people without cards, that's the whole thing. So we just take books. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. It's like have library, we'll travel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll be there and we'll bring some stuff and it'll be fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And serve the community. Yes, and we actually just um, last week opened a little free library in Southdale Park. So it's two uh, recycled, upcycled steel lockers that we built to look like a little house. Um, and it's full of books in English and in Spanish for all ages. Uh -huh. And that's I take one, leave one, but also you can just take one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So multilingual also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yes. I think that is one of the communities that has a hard time getting to the building, so that mm -hmm. we're able to take something out. And mm -hmm. Well, and that, as we talked about earlier, the transportation for people mm -hmm. is sometimes a barrier. Right. So then your, yeah. your uh, opportunities here that yeah. you offer out into the community. Yep. yep. And hopefully we'll be able to do more and more of that. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, I have one final question, yes. and it's a personal one. Yes. So what gives you uh -huh. the greatest joy being the director of the Fitchburg Public Library? That's tough. I think I'm going to say it's, it's definitely the staff, watching the staff kind of grow and flourish. You know, we've had people come and go, but they have all, I think, for the most part, had a really positive experience. And just building a team that really works very well together, so a high-functioning team um, that's interested in public service, like watching them interact with the public is fantastic. Like they, they really want to be there because they like people. Um, they want to help people. Um, and then watching them work together to like, what can we do next? What like, we don't have to always do what we've always done. Let's, let's do some new things. We always have a strategic plan going. Um, we're ending one this year and we'll start one next year. And so getting, they get to have feedback into like, what should we, what should we do next? What should we try? Um, so just kind of seeing that all come together, that's fantastic. Uh, That's what makes me want to be the library. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, it takes that person as a director to 
bring forth those mm -hmm. gifts from people too yeah. and form that uh, yeah. bonding yes. am among your staff yes. members. Great. Yep. Yeah. Well, Wendy, we thank you so much for being here today. And I just want to also um, say how appreciative the Fitchburg Historical Society is having a home in yes. the Fitchburg We're Library. So happy to have you. It just gives us a place where we can also um, relate to the community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a home. Mm -hmm. So um, the library serves so many different functions yes. for, for our community. Yeah. Thank you for directing it yes. and, and being that centering person for the library yeah. for us. So. Happy to do it. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> Thank much. Thank you.